I'm joined now by James Boyce, who's Professor of International Political Studies at the American Univer International University here in London. James Boyce, nice to see you. Uh, what are you expecting from today as far as foreign policy is concerned? I think what's going to be most interesting is to see what comes out of this address to, uh, to the parliamentary uh, groups this afternoon. As you said, it's a very rare occasion. And uh, the, the assumption is that there's going to be some declaration about a new uh, transatlantic intelligence grouping, which is going to come together to really formalise uh, the relationship between GCHQ and the National Security Agency, for example. Well, yes, and how significant is that? Because, I mean, the Americans, have they not been particularly careful about keeping their secret secret? I mean, so how much is this opening up a significance there? I think it's very significant. I mean, we're talking about a move from a special to an essential relationship and a lot of discussion of the semantics involved in there. However you define that relationship, it's always been one that's been based on a great deal more than the personal relationship between the president and the prime minister. And intelligence and military have been very much at the heart of that. That relationship does matter, doesn't it? I mean, personal chemistry, if you look at those uh, pictures of, of Blair and Bush and, sure. and how they seem to genuinely get on while going to war together, it does matter, doesn't it? It does matter. What it does, it sets a tone. But any talk about an ending to a special relationship is, uh, is really premature at any stage because it's founded upon so much more than that personal relationship. The military, the intelligence, the historical element to the relationship isn't going anywhere. Uh, America's national security apparatus is very much founded and based upon the British model. Uh, and as a result of that, there are very, very close ties between the, the American and the British. Uh, whatever, the, whatever the relationship between the two leaders are, that relationship doesn't really alter that great deal amount. How well do the two men get on, do you think? I think it's very clear that what you've got here is a very good, close, personal rapport. Quite whether it's on the scale of a, a Ronnie and a Maggie is, uh, uh, is questionable, but there's no doubt about it that uh, I think we've seen as good a relationship between these two men as we could expect to hope at this time. And yet, does Barack Obama really have a soft spot for England? I mean, he's not an Anglophile, uh, as some previous leaders have been, is he? Well, don't forget, he's an Irishman now, of course. Um, <laughs> Obama. I think, I think what he realises is that he's going to be dealing with David Cameron for the next four years, at the very least which will take him into the, his second term in office. So for the duration of an Obama presidency, he will be dealing with Prime Minister Cameron. So there's a need on both sides to get on and make a, forge a very good working relationship. OK, uh, James Boys, uh, for now, thank you. Uh, we're taking you to Downing Street because we can see Hillary Clinton and William Hague just leaving uh, from talks.